Well, you just can't win for losing, can you? It's that time of year again, and you've finally escaped the confines of your home to enjoy the great outdoors. You're in vacation mode, you're on island time, you're feeling good, everything seems to be going great, but then disaster strikes. You find this video and it ruins your whole summer by telling you that sunscreen is dangerous. So if sunscreen is dangerous and not wearing sunscreen is dangerous, what are you supposed to do? Well, it's true, if you don't wear sunscreen, your risk for skin cancer goes up. Fun stuff, huh? Well, it turns out that if you do wear sunscreen, certain types of sunscreen, you could potentially suffer the neurotoxic effects of the active chemical ingredients in that sunscreen. Yeah, that's right. The vast majority of the active ingredients used in sunscreen are potential neurotoxins, but not quite all of them. There are a couple that the FDA has deemed safe for use. Unfortunately, they are few and far between. We're going to cover all that in this video, but first of all, I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. As usual, none of what I'm about to tell you is medical advice. It is backed by research, but I am not a doctor, so this video is for entertainment purposes only. Now, this whole sunscreen problem is something my wife and I just found out about a few days ago while we were on vacation. And yeah, that kind of sucked, but we thought it was worth sharing for the sake of helping other parents out there who might not already know about this, because it's important. And that's what this channel is all about, helping other parents and soon to be parents with their newborns, infants, toddlers, and young children. So be sure to like this video and click that subscribe button if you're interested in getting tons of useful info that's gonna help you become the best parent in your neighborhood, guaranteed. Not really. But you'll feel like a better parent at least because you're informed and knowing is half the battle. So that's something. Anyway, let me explain where this whole sunscreen warning comes from. My wife had seen a social media post somewhere by a mother talking about her child having these little, what are called micro seizures, uh, these sort of momentary episodes where her child was becoming unresponsive, kind of zoning out and then snapping out of it and behaving normally again. And after talking with her doctor, determined that the cause of these episodes was the sunscreen that she had been wearing. And I don't know about you, but I don't believe everything I read on social media. So I said, let me read up on this and see if this is actually legitimate. As it turns out, that post had gone viral in mom's groups across social media, and it has since been debunked as inaccurate and not at all based on scientific evidence. So there are no sunscreen ingredients that are known to cause seizures specifically. Now that doesn't mean that there aren't other potential concerns with them, because what I did find was a study conducted by the National Institutes of Health regarding the potential neurotoxic effects of various ingredients in sunscreen. This study basically concludes that yes, there's a lot we don't know, there's potential for this absorption to cause harm, but there's also a lot more research that we still need to do. So the point of this video is to teach you about the knowns versus the unknowns so you can make a decision based on the level of risk you're willing to take on for yourself and for your family. So we're gonna talk about all of these different ingredients and tell you which ones are the safe ones and which ones are not. So that by the end of this video, you should be able to look at a sunscreen label and know exactly what you're looking at and exactly what to watch out for. There are about a dozen different active ingredients that are used in various sunscreens, and most of the products I've seen use more than one of those active ingredients. That's why it can be hard to find a sunscreen that doesn't use at least one ingredient that is either proven to be a neurotoxin or suspected of being one. Ugh, that just sounds awful, doesn't it? Neurotoxin. So we already know that sunscreen is harmful to the environment and to marine life, but that's another topic for another video. The problem with the active ingredients in sunscreen, which are what we call UV filters, because they either scatter the sunlight or absorb it, is in the way that these substances themselves are absorbed into the skin and enter the body to such a degree that they can be found in the bloodstream, urine, and even breast milk. Yes, the chemicals you apply to your skin, and this includes not just sunscreen, but everything from lotion to hair care products to makeup, do matter. And they matter a lot more than you may think especially if you're pregnant. The specific dangers to babies and young children is due to the skin's natural tendency to absorb certain compounds. As you can imagine, babies have not only thinner and more sensitive skin than adults, they've also got a lot less total surface area across their skin and a much higher ratio of surface area to body weight. 
So any chemical absorbed through a baby's skin has the potential to have a much stronger effect than it would for an adult. Now, as I mentioned, most sunscreen products have more than one active ingredient. In fact, it's usually somewhere between two and six, and this is according to the Environmental Working Group, which is a nonprofit organization dedicated to protecting human health and the environment. Now, active UV filters come in two forms, chemical or organic, and mineral or inorganic. Now, I know that's confusing because you hear the word organic and you associate that with organic produce or organic meat or dairy, but in the case of sunscreen, organic is not where you wanna be. So let's just call them chemical filters instead, right? Chemical sounds worse, so that'll help us differentiate in our minds a little better. So some examples of chemical UV filters are oxybenzone, avabenzone, octosalate, octocrylene, homosalate, and octanoxate. To date, not a single one of these chemicals has been ruled out as a potential cause of disruptive internal effects such as hormonal changes, allergic reactions, thyroid alterations, and behavioral anomalies. Many of them are known endocrine disruptors, which means they're hormonally active and can cause an imbalance in the people who use them. Some of these chemicals have not yet been confirmed as endocrine disruptors, but in those cases, the FDA has proposed across the board that there is insufficient data to apply an official status. The status that the FDA grants as its stamp of approval here is called GRACE, or G-R-A-S-E, which stands for Generally Recognized as Safe and Effective. In 2019, the FDA proposed new regulation to work with independent partners on the further study of each of the dozen ingredients to which they haven't given GRACE certification yet. So they are moving in the right direction, but still that means we won't know for sure about any of these ingredients until more studies are done. I don't want to leave my child's health up to chance, do you? So let's talk about what we as parents can do to keep our children safe while we're enjoying that beautiful summer weather. Well, first of all, it's recommended that for children under two years of age, you limit sustained sunlight exposure as much as possible. If you're going to the beach or the pool, dress them in swimwear that keeps them covered. We get those little wetsuit type shirts for Xander and then he wears a hat with a big neck flap so he can splash around and we only need to put sunscreen on his face, hands, and lower legs. That limits the coverage area so we don't have to put all that much on him relative to his overall skin surface area. But we also make sure to use the good stuff. So now let's get into that. The other form of active UV filter we haven't covered yet, remember we talked about the chemical or the quote unquote organic kind, is the mineral kind. This is the inorganic kind of UV filter. There are only two of these, two mineral-based UV filters that are used in sunscreens. And the FDA has deemed both of them safe for use on people of any age. Not only do they have extremely low rates of absorption, less than 0.1% in fact, there's also no evidence that shows that either of these are endocrine disruptors. These two mineral-based ingredients are zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Now be aware there is an inhalation risk with both of these, and they are commonly used in spray-on or powdered stick sunscreen. So if you're using a spray type sunscreen, be sure you're in a well-ventilated area, keep that spray away from noses and mouths. If you can, spray it on your hands first and apply it to the neck and facial areas, rather than, of course, you know, spraying it directly in someone's face or where someone could breathe it in. The bottom line here is that we know that chemical ingredients are absorbed into the body at much higher rates than mineral ingredients are. In fact, mineral ingredients basically don't get absorbed by the body at all. Now, just because something is absorbed doesn't necessarily mean it's doing any harm, right? The point is the FDA has not arrived at a science-based conclusion about many of these chemicals. So if you want to be extra safe, you have the option of not using them and using zinc oxide and or titanium dioxide instead. So that's the lowdown on sunscreens. Stick with mineral-based products or inorganic, which no sunscreen product is going to label itself inorganic, just again, because of the connotations of that. But stick with those mineral-based products and you'll keep yourself and your children a lot safer the next time you're out enjoying the sunshine. That's it for today. So thanks for watching everyone. If you're a new parent or you're about to be a new parent and you're feeling completely clueless and unprepared, you're in the right place. We're not experts, we're just parents like you and we wanna share our experiences with you in hopes that they'll help you along on your journey through parenthood. 
So as always, if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful or informative, be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more baby-related videos like this one.